Grace and peace to you and welcome on the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, in the Easter season, we uh, focus on worship and there's not much else going on uh, in Lent. There were lots of things happening. Uh, the only thing I can highlight for you this week is uh, you don't want to miss Bible study if you're really interested in Revelation. Uh, we decided to continue on with our Lenten series because we didn't quite get uh, through Revelation. In fact, we're just near the beginning, actually. So if you uh, are interested in what it says in that mystical and cryptic last book of the Bible. Uh, there's still time to join on on Thursday, either at 11 o'clock or uh, Thursday at uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. And those links will came to you on Friday and they'll come again on, uh, oh, well, they won't come on Wednesday because nothing's happening on Wednesday this week. But uh, make sure we get those out to you uh, as well on Thursday morning. It's uh, Women's History Month and uh, Becky has, no, it's not Women's History Month any longer. No, nope, it's just an announcement about the prelude. Great. <laughs> so this is a prelude that I didn't put together, luckily, because it has almost 2,000 people performing in it, either singing or playing instruments. This is a version of Jesus Christ is Risen Today that was put together for Easter by the Association of the Lutheran Church Musicians.
Please join me in our entrance hymn. The risen Christ who walks on wounded feet from garden tomb through darkened city street unlocks the door of grief, despair, and fear and speaks a word of peace to all who hear. The risen Christ who stands with wounded side breathes out his spirit on them to abide. Whose faith still waves, who dare not to believe, new grace, new strength, new purpose they receive. The risen Christ, who breaks with wounded hand the bread for those who fail to understand, reveals himself despite their lingering tears, inflames their hearts, then quickly disappears. May we, Christ's body, walk and serve and stand with those oppressed in this and every land till all are blessed and can be a blessing restored in Christ to true humanity. victorious and risen Lord, the love of our God who raised him, and the communion of the Holy Spirit which he gives to us be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, who saw Jesus risen from the dead, testify to the truth that he is the Savior you had promised. Let their witness and testimony come to us now with the power of your Spirit, that we who have not seen may yet believe. We ask this in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The first lesson is from Acts. When the gathering had prayed, and the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything <coughs> they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands and or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. <coughs> The psalm will be said responsibly today is Psalm 133. Behold how pleasant, how good it is. How pleasant and harmonious when God's people are together. Behold how pleasant, how good it is. How pleasant and harmonious 
when God's people are together, refreshing as the dew on the mountain of the Lord. Behold, how pleasant, how good it is. How pleasant and harmonious when God's people are together. There the Lord God bestows a blessing, life forevermore. Behold, how pleasant, how good it is. Concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us all from sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The end of the reading. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Spread the good news over all the earth. He is God and he's risen. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. In the evening on that day, the one after the Sabbath, when the doors were locked where the disciples were on account of the fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace to you. And having said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced, having seen the Lord. Then he said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And having said this, he breathed into them, saying to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you let go of the sins of any, they have been let go of them. If you seize them, they have been seized. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples kept telling him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will never believe. And after eight days, the disciples were again together, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Bring your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand, and cast it in my side, and stop disbelieving, rather, start believing. Thomas answered him, and he said, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who do not see, and still believe. The Gospel of the Lord. So the second Sunday after Easter, welcome. I was really curious this morning to see just how many people came in person after last week's record-breaking Easter services. Of course, record-breaking is all relative. You know, these days any service with more than 40 people in it is record-breaking. I had a little laugh earlier this week because I went back to the videotape to see what we did last year on the second Sunday of Easter. And uh, it turns out we were about two weeks into being shut down at that point. So we weren't even here. Oops, everybody's getting some emergency announcement. Anyway, we were two weeks into being shut down. And I had to laugh because during the announcements in the videotape that we made to send out to everybody, uh, I said, hang in there, folks. It looks like we're going to be closed up for just a couple more weeks. <laughs> just a couple, yeah. Well, a year into this, I've learned that the best we can say is, well, let's wait and see. Because, you know, I am fully prepared for Governor Cuomo to have some kind of spontaneous news conference on Friday morning somewhere and announce all the churches are open, no more social distancing, stop wearing your masks, sing out. Just as much as I'm prepared for Governor Cuomo to have a press conference on Friday and say everything is shut down again. We just wait and see. Kind of like Thomas this morning. Wait and see. Now all of you who are here this morning I know are die-hard second Sunday of Easter attendees. So while you were getting dressed and thinking about this morning, you probably already knew you were going to hear about Doubting Thomas. Because every year on the second Sunday of Easter, the church traditionally trots out this Gospel of John story about Doubting Thomas. Now we do that because the church thinks it's kind of cool that on the eighth day after Easter, we read a gospel about the disciples on the eighth day after Easter. See how that works? Yeah, it's kind of churchy geeky, I know, but eh. I would think that after the tradition of having attendance plummet from last week to this week, we would have figured out a way to try and carry on that kind of energy and enthusiasm that everybody had from last week, right? Not go right to doubting Thomas. Though I find it really curious that the two, two worship services that have the highest attendance in the pews have the least presence of Jesus in the service, right? He's either just being born or he's disappeared. And we're here. But we're here. So let's see. Let's take a minute and reflect on Thomas and the disciples and what's happening today. In the sense of what's happening today in the gospel and what's happening today. So Thomas, can you blame it? Can you relate to what was going on with Thomas and the disciples this whole last week? I think we should be able to because we've been experiencing the same kind of 
tension in our community that they were probably experiencing a tension about how it is we're supposed to actually manage our way to the end of this pandemic crisis you know on the one hand we have in our community the people who are like the disciples who have first-hand experience of the virus and have seen and believe on the other hand, we have people like Thomas, who've had no first-hand experience. They haven't seen. They don't quite believe. And there's a whole bunch of people who are like the folks that Jesus talks about at the end of the, par of, the end of the story, where they haven't had first-hand experience, and yet they believe. And we've been living in the midst of this kind of tension in our community about what is it that we should know and how is it that we should know what we should know. Like the disciples. And Thomas. Who I have to give some credit to, you know, when you look at it that way, because Thomas is really courageous, isn't he? And he's, he's boldly standing by his methodology, his perspective on things, despite the overwhelming opposition that is surrounding him all week long. Of course, I also have to give Thomas some credit about being open-minded. He's also willing, once his methodology is satisfied, once he receives what he's asking for, his mind has changed. He's not asking for much, is he? He's not asking Jesus to make him ruler of the world or to win the Powerball so that he believes. He's just asking for some first-hand experience of Jesus. Well, he's asking for first-hand experience that's going to confirm that the first-hand experience that he's having is actually the Jesus he saw crucified, right? Because Thomas is really asking for first-hand experience of Jesus' wounds. Which makes me wonder, what kind of first-hand experience, what kind of expectations do we have of Jesus as a predicate to our faith? As a predicate to our believing? You know, as a Lutheran pastor, I hear more stories about people losing their faith than actually coming to faith. And I, I just chalk that up to the fact that I'm a Lutheran pastor, not another kind of pastor. And Lutherans generally come to faith in one of three ways. They're either born a Lutheran, or you marry a Lutheran, or you transition from being some other kind of denomination to being a Lutheran. It doesn't make for the most exciting coming to faith kind of stories. But the common theme that I hear in most of the losing my faith stories is disappointment. Disappointment in Jesus not meeting expectations. Like the disciples. You know, they did not expect Jesus to die. They expected Jesus to do something grand. Something fantastic victorious, revolutionary, at least radically progressive. And so when Jesus didn't meet their expectations, they lost their faith, which in their case meant they did not believe or trust in Jesus' word to them any longer. In which case they end up being just like Thomas, right? It's just that Thomas is bold enough to hold on to his conviction and his perspective, his disbelief, even when he's surrounded by a cloud of people witnessing to their faith. Which says to me that we should pay attention uh, to the community of the disciples in this past week. Because it says something to us about how we might want to think about being in community together. You know, in the story, we don't hear that over the last week, the other ten disciples harass Thomas. They don't make fun of him. They don't kid him. They don't throw him out. They don't beat him up. 
They don't make derogatory jokes about him. They don't have over-the-top accusations about how ridiculous he is. They treat him like one of them. And Thomas, he doesn't run out into the street and declare publicly how absolutely stupid the rest of these disciples are because they have obviously been so duped. Thomas doesn't shirk his responsibility or his role in the community. He stays. We've got the believers and the unbelievers living together respectfully, honorably, for the sake of the community and for the good of all of the members of the community together, which is why Thomas is still there a week later, still with the disciples when Jesus comes back. So maybe we should downplay the doubting part of Thomas a little bit and upplay instead Thomas's courage, his patience, his open-mindedness, his commitment to his community. But enough about Thomas. We missed Jesus last week. I don't want to run out of time for Jesus to make his appearance today. So let's talk about Jesus. And the thing about Jesus in the gospel today is that Jesus is there. He is present. He brings his peace. And he gives his disciples purpose. It is really important that Jesus is present with them. Jesus comes to them. Jesus does not ask them to first overcome your fear put aside your doubt, and then come find me. It's Jesus who comes to us, overcoming our fear, overstepping our doubt, meeting us where we are. And when Jesus comes, when Jesus becomes present, he's not there to correct or condemn He's there instead to bring his peace. Now, of course, there are times when Jesus comes and he stirs things up by his presence. Those are necessary times, and we look to Jesus to do that. But in the face of fear and doubt, Jesus does not come to condemn and correct. He comes to soothe our fear and to settle our doubts to bring us peace. And then he gives his disciples a purpose. He tells them to go out and by their presence, bring his presence. And by their peace, bring his peace. To go out and to soothe those who are afraid and to support those who are unsettled. To go out and to be with not only those who agree with you, not only those who share your same perspectives or believe what you believe, but to go out there and be with the Thomases. To be with us even, when we're like Thomas. So maybe let's not focus too much on doubting Thomas but on courageous Thomas, patient Thomas. Thomas who is open-minded and devoted to his community. A Thomas who comes to faith and then answers Jesus' call to go and to be present and to bring the peace of Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the hymn of the day. These things did Thomas count as real, the warmth of blood, the chill of steel, the grain of wood, the heft of stone, 
last frail twitch of flesh and bone. The vision of, this, of his skeptic mind was keen enough to make him blind to any unexpected act too large for his small world of fact. His reasoned certainties denied that one could live when one had died until his fingers read like braille the markings of the spear and them. May we, O oh God, by grace believe, and thus the risen Christ receive, whose raw imprinted palms reach out and beckon Thomas from his doubt.
joyfully your tribute bring. Ransom, heal, restore, forgive. Evermore God's praises sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise is the last name. God be praised for grace and favor to our forebears in distress. God be praised the same forever, slow to chime and swift to bless. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Great is God's Frail as summer's flower we flourish, blows the wind and it is gone. But as mortals rise and perish, God endures unchanging on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the great eternal one. Angels sing in adoration in God's presence face to face. Sun and moon and all creation, all who dwell in time and space. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to us the God. Send to us, Jesus, that his presence will bring us the same peace and purpose he once brought to his disciples on this day long ago. Then, empower us with the Spirit as well, that we will have the courage, the patience, the open-mindedness, and the commitment to our community that Thomas had, and that by our presence, we will bring Christ's peace as well. Risen Christ. Heavenly Father, give patience and strength, wisdom and skill to all of those who are still vigilantly on the front lines of caring for the sick and the dying today. Empower them with the will and the energy they need to endure. Keep them safe. And open our eyes and our hearts to be disciplined in the role we must all play in defeating the power of this pandemic. Risen Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray for the leaders of all levels of government here in the United States as they continue to struggle to manage the toll this pandemic is taking on our economy, on our education, on our mental health, on our general well-being. Give them the wisdom to act courageously and effectively, sustaining the policies and the practices necessary to check our zealousness to be more open while also pushing the boundaries needed to deliver support to those in need and to reopen our economy safely. Most especially, we pray that, like the disciples, those of different perspectives and opinions will commit themselves to working together in the spirit of striving always to discern the greatest good for all the people. Risen Christ. Yeah. Heavenly Father, as the farmers and the agricultural workers begin preparing the fields for planting, we ask that you bless their seed and the soil, that you bless the planters and the planters, that we will continue to have abundant harvests and be able to design equitable systems that bring food to our tables and to all who are hungry. We also ask your blessing on our community's efforts to reestablish our local community garden, 
that we can continue to supply fresh produce to the food pantries around our town. And of course, we ask you to bless our own efforts at home. Watch over and protect our small gardens from being ravaged by the raccoons and the rabbits or devoured by the deer. Risen Christ. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon those who are sick and those who are dying, especially those we name before you now who are heavy on our hearts and present in our minds. Risen Christ. Yeah. And Heavenly Father, as you heard and responded to the prayer that Thomas prayed for faith, we ask that you hear and respond to the prayers that we raise before you for ourselves now as well. Risen Christ. Yeah. Now, Father, we are bold to pray as your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil. For I am the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our risen Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>